All right, going to do a quick video refuting Bruce Mejia's typical non-dispensational heretical twisting of Romans 4 to try to state that people were always saved the same way in every dispensation. Non-dispensational heretics always love to use Romans 4, and I'm going to show you how he's twisting what it's saying. So here's the clip. Well, look at Romans chapter number 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. <clears throat> for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him to justify the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Well, that doesn't count because Abraham was before the law. You know, let's talk about people that were in the law. Okay, how about David? Amen. Who describeth the blessedness of him unto, unto whom the Lord doth not impute sin. Amen. He was under the law. Yep. Okay, going to show you the error that you get into when you use Romans 4. Okay, by isolating this one passage, you could easily come to the conclusion, the non-dispensational heretical conclusion, that salvation has always been the same. When it says Abraham was justified by faith. Okay. But James chapter 2, verse 20 to 24, gives more details about this justification that Abraham received. James chapter 2, verses 20 to 24. But wilt thou, wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how that faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then, you see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. What's going on? So what was this faith that Abraham had? Well, Genesis chapter 22, verses 7 to 8. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went, or so so they went both of them together. Not good at reading on a computer, but a little, a little side note. This is actually a good typology of Jesus Christ, because God providing himself a lamb for the sacrifice. Well, what's Jesus called? The Lamb of God. You can see John chapter 1, verse 29. Jesus is the Lamb of God. So it's a good foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. So what was this faith that Abraham had? The faith that Abraham had was that God would provide a lamb for the burnt offering. This is further confirmed in Hebrews 11, verses 7 to 19. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 7 to 17, sorry, 17 to 19, sorry. Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. I said 7 to 19. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall that seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him a figure. So he's accounting, he's having faith that God would raise him from the dead. So Abraham still had to do a work. The work was, go sacrifice your son. God confirms that he was just testing Abraham's faith. Genesis chapter 22, verses 11 to 12. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For I know now that thou, for I now know, sorry, for, sorry, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And quick little side note, the angel of the Lord is often a reference to God himself, to Jesus Christ. So it's God speaking here. But we see here, what do we see? What's going on here? So when Romans chapter 4 verses 1 and 3 says that Abraham was justified by faith, it's not saying that Abraham was putting his faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, like the non-dispensational heretics will say. The faith that justified Abraham was that he had faith that God would provide a lamb for the sacrifice. He had faith that God would raise his son from the dead, which he initially thought he was going to have to actually kill his son. Obviously, God stopped it from happening. But Abraham was trusting God 
that he would, when he said he would provide a lamb for the burnt offering, but Abraham still had to do a work. So when it says Abraham believed God, he was not believing in the death, burnt, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for salvation. He had faith that God was going to provide a lamb for the sacrifice. So they always had to twist Romans 4 to say, see, Abraham believed God. Okay, what did he believe? Again, they don't talk about what was the belief that Abraham had, what was the faith that Abraham had. They don't compare scripture to scripture according to 1 Corinthians 2, 13, like we're commanded to. So don't be deceived by these non-dispensational heretics. They try to twist the scriptures. They have this little pet few verses they like to use to say that salvation has always been the same. They promote this heresy that salvation has always been the same. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.